Shadow of the Sith by Adam Christopher is the new Star Wars novel that came out recently, and it is full of fun references to other Star Wars stories. Some of them were very surprising, so let's get into them. Spoilers for the book are ahead. The novel begins with a warning from a darker time. That warning is actually a direct quote from the Revenge of the Sith novelization by Matthew Stover. Ray's parents, Dathan and Miramir, spend this entire book on the run from the Sith. They question how they are constantly being tracked, but we know that the First Order and therefore the Sith Eternal have hyperspace tracking technology. They are initially saved by New Republic pilots wearing blue flight suits, which match what we see in Star Wars Resistance and some of the comics. One of the primary villains of the book is Kiza, a Pantoran woman who appeared in interludes in two books of the Aftermath trilogy. She was a member of the Acolytes of the Beyond, and she was given the mask of a Sith named Exim Panchard. The mask possessed and consumed her, and several years later we can see that she is still under its control. But we now also see her wielding a very unique lightsaber. The blade is curved like a scythe, and we learn that it once belonged to Darth Noctis. That character and her lightsaber are both from the Dark Legends collection of short stories, which aren't considered to be strictly canon, but that doesn't mean other authors can't pick up elements they like to use in their own stories. On Exegol, Sith cultists can be heard chanting the names of Sith long gone. Noctis is one of those names. Sanguis was another character from the same Dark Legends story as Noctis, who was able to gain the immortality so many Sith seek, but for a terrible price. Darth Plagueis was, of course, Sidious's master. Revan is another famous Sith from the Legends game Knights of the Old Republic, but their name has been mentioned in canon reference books. Shaw was the master of the Sith Lord Momin from the Charles Soule run of Darth Vader comics. And finally, Kaken and Vord are also named, but they're new to me. Maybe we'll meet them in the future. We finally learn the location of Luke's Jedi Temple and its Ossus. That planet first appeared in the Legends Tales of the Jedi series, where it was an important planet to the Jedi Order's early history. Lor Santeca travels to Ossus to speak with Luke and bring him to an archaeological dig. Lor first appeared in The Force Awakens and has also been seen in the comics helping Luke and young Ben Solo. They mention having found several holocrons over the years, potentially including the large collection that was once held by Jocasta Nu before her death. Luke's compass from Pilio is mentioned as helping them find old Jedi temples and relics, and I want to see more of that. The archaeological dig is thanks to the Lurked Historical Institute, which was a school in Star Wars Legends from the Alliance Intelligence Report's role-playing supplement. Beaumont Ken is present at the dig site, which makes sense. His homeworld was Lurked, and reference books have already affiliated him with the Lurked Historical Institute. Ochi of Bestoon has a major role in the story, and he thinks back to his burns and how he lost his eyes on Exegol as seen in the Darth Vader comics. His continued experiences with Vader from that series and Crimson Reign are also mentioned. He even travels back to Z9 City 7 to hire the droid crush pirates. That was a location he visited and a group he encountered in Darth Vader issue 13. The writing on Ochi's blade is specifically said to be ur the ancient language of the Sith which first appeared in the Tales of the Jedi comics. Ochi is seen wielding a Beskar blade, that's the metal Mandalorians used to forge their armor, but we also now know that they specifically forbid creating weapons from it. We learn that during the Clone Wars, Ochi hunted Depa Balaba and survived an encounter with her master, Mace Windu. When we first catch up with Lando, he is at a bar that has three Lasat bouncers, the same species as Zeb from Star Wars Rebels. Lando thinks about casinos he's visited, like the Errant Venture. In Legends, that was the name of a converted Star Destroyer under the ownership of the smuggler Booster Tarek. At this point in the timeline, maybe it's still out there. Lando still has his own ship, the Lady Luck, which was already made canon thanks to Last Shot by Daniel Jose Older, but was first established as Lando's ship way back in Heir to the Empire by Timothy Zahn. Lando's romantic partner in Last Shot, Kasha, is also mentioned, but it's not stated whether or not she is the mother of Lando's kidnapped daughter. Several drinks are mentioned throughout the book, but the Red Dwarf is a drink that was first created way back in a 1979 comic strip called Tatooine Sojourn. The Rodian Splice was first seen in the 2015 run of Star Wars comics in the 56th issue. You can find the recipe to make it in the Black Spire Outpost cookbook. While they hunt for Rey's family, Lando and Luke get some help from an old friend from the Rebellion, Shriv. That Duros character first appeared in Battlefront 2, but has continued to pop up in books and comics. Shriv is stationed on Adelphi, which is where Carson Teva was stationed, as he mentioned in The Mandalorian Season 2. To seek guidance, Luke travels to Tython and sits on the Seeing Stone, which we see Grogu experience in The Mandalorian Season 2 episode, The Tragedy. 
Luke also mentions the Martyrium of Frozen Tears, another location on the same planet seen in Dr. Aphra issue 40. Luke learns a little bit about Exegol thanks to the writings of Klee the Elder, who is said to have written one of the sacred Jedi texts in the Rise of Skywalker Jr. novel. Luke is spiritually transported to Exegol while on the Seeing Stone and is rescued by Anakin's spirit, who seems to struggle to manifest and fades between the young and old versions of himself, I believe meaning that he sometimes looks like Hayden Christensen and sometimes looks like Sebastian Shaw. A character named Zargo recognizes Dathan as a clone of some kind and wonders if he has Kaminoan imprints or Kam logo proteins. Kamino is of course very famously a cloning world in Star Wars, but so was Kam. That world first appeared in the Legends novel Darksaber, and all of its citizens were clones of the generations that came before. Luke describes remembering Vader's presence in the Force as a twisting sun dragon curled in the core of a star about to go nova. The sun dragon metaphor was first created for the Revenge of the Sith novelization, but was recently expanded upon in Brotherhood by Mike Chen. We see the Empire, or what very little is left of it, reforming in the corporate sector. That area of space first appeared in the Legends Han Solo adventures, some of the earliest Star Wars stories written. An agent of the Sith Eternal there, called Steadfast, is revealed to be Enric Pride. When he eventually serves as Allegiant General of the First Order, his Star Destroyer is called the Steadfast. Pride meets with the Viceprex of the Corporate Sector Authority, which was established as a high-ranking title back in Han Solo at Star's End. CSA Security Police are called Espos by Lando, a term that was used as slang by smugglers back in that same story. Pride is also seen drinking Abrax from a flask, a type of cognac first created for the very first X-Wing book, Rogue Squadron. When Lando learns of the mask of Viceroy Exim Panshard, he recalls his experiences with Momin's mask as seen in the Charles Soule Lando comics. Lando has two Stormwolf model speeder bikes. I saw Adam Christopher making some sneaky comments about this on Twitter, and I think the models are meant to be references to Michael Stackpole, who wrote the Legends X-Wing books and several other great Star Wars stories, but his website is stormwolf.com. Meanwhile, Ochi has a Cap 2 walker in his inventory. That was a toy created for the Empire Strikes Back line, which is insanely goofy looking. This is one of my favorite references because reading about it is kind of intimidating, and then I looked it up and burst out laughing. Luke wonders if some of the bounty hunters Ochi hires work for Black Sun or the Crimora Syndicate. Black Sun is a well-known criminal syndicate in Star Wars dating back to Shadows of the Empire. Crimora was first mentioned in the Tarkin novel by James Lucino, and they've only ever been mentioned and never seen to the point I'm starting to think this is just a running joke between writers to only talk about them and never show them. In need of a new ship, Luke and Lando borrow the Star Herald from Lena Graff. That ship and its owner first appeared in the Adventures in Wild Space books, and have appeared several times throughout the Star Wars Adventures comics as well. Lando says, Have I mentioned I have a bad feeling about this yet? Because I can feel it starting to come on, which I think is a fun way to include the line without saying it word for word. Luke meets up with an old ally named Komat, who has a pet Targon. Those giant cat-like creatures were first created for the High Republic as pets to Chancellor Lena So. They also share a cup of hot chocolate, which has been seen in Star Wars since Heir to the Empire, although it was already made canon thanks to the Servants of the Empire books, and you can order it on Batuu at Galaxy's Edge. Luke and Lando are able to use an older version of First Order hyperspace tracking thanks to data that was taken from Scarif. That's the first place we ever saw hyperspace tracking mentioned as Jin reads out Imperial projects in Rogue One. Komat is revealed to be a former member of the Acolytes of Beyond and carries a white lightsaber that Luke helped her purify long ago. Red kyber crystals can be purified of their darkness, creating a white blade, just like Ahsoka's lightsabers. Dathan carries a Sith hex charm with him as a reminder of his former life and family that he escaped. It is made of song steel, a material first created for role-playing source books. It was said to be reserved for only the most exquisite weapons, but was light and yet strong enough to withstand a lightsaber. We see Lando look back at chapter 73 of the Calrissian Chronicles, something he calls Double Jeopardy, the terrible secret of Lasbane. Lasbane was a planet that first appeared in the 73rd issue of the original Star Wars comics, which was released in 1983. A board game called Lavornia's Age of Dragons is found on board the Star Herald. I have to assume that's a shout out to StarWars.com writer and friend of the channel, Bria Lavornia, who happens to love the Dragon Age games. Follow her on Twitter at Chaos Bria. She's a great cosplayer, too. Ray's parents are laid to rest on the planet Neftali and the Socorro system. That's the same system where Lando grew up. 
We learn that Komat is a Wind Raider of Talaran, and she gives Lando the armor we see him wearing in The Rise of Skywalker. The Wind Raiders were created for the Star Wars Adventure Journal and appeared in a Clone Wars graphic novella. And that's everything I caught. If you're interested in checking out Shadow of the Sith, you can pick up the audiobook for free on Audible. Just click on the link in the description or visit www.audibletrial.com slash Star Wars Explained. The audiobook is out right now, and the production value on all the Star Wars books is very high with sound effects and music. It's like listening to a movie. Signing up for an Audible trial will get you a credit for one free book, and you can use it on Shadow of the Sith or just about any Star Wars book you can think of. Or get any book you want. The point is, you get a free book, and you'll be supporting the channel when you do. But that's it for today. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.